Hello and welcome to Golden Armor Studios and in this video I'll show you how to use the Principal Baker add-on and with a couple of clicks you can turn messy notes like this into just a couple of textures that's super easy to use. And as you can see they both look exactly the same. It just transfers all the data into the textures. And within that, there's two different ways to go about it. The first is to just separate the materials out. You can see I have two materials, the wood and the metal, and you can see them right here. And then the other way is to just combine them like you see here. This is just one texture combined into the one, and that can make things more simple. But with the add-on, it can be kind of difficult because you can see here on the top, there's some weird shading. And on the bottom, there's also some weird shading that isn't there on the original. And also it's a little bit more work to do this because you have to align the UVs in the correct way. All right, so to get started, I already have my mesh set up with my materials, as you can see here. If you'd like to download the before and after project, you can do that for free in the description. That way you can see the process. And also if you want to follow along, you can do that as well. But first we need to download the Principal Baker add-on. In the description, there'll be a link for the Principal Baker add-on. Go ahead and click that and it'll take you to GitHub. Once you get here, you'll want to click on the code and then download zip file. And then go back to your blend file and don't unzip it. Just go up to edit, preferences, and add-ons. And then come up here and click install. And I created a folder for all of my add-ons that I just stick them all in. So I'll click that and then here it is, the principal baker master. You want to click that and then install add-on. Once you do that, just type in baker and then the principal baker add-on should show up and just make sure that's ticked. And then come down here, make sure it's saved, and then you can close out of that. Then I'll select the ax and do Shift D, and then right click, and then M, and new collection. And I'll just call that saved. And then I'll just untick this just to hide that. And I'm just doing that because I'm gonna do the two separate ways. And then the next thing we're gonna wanna do is do Shift A, mesh, and then go up to plane. And then I'll do G, and X just to move that along the X value. And it doesn't matter what size it is. This is just going to be what we're baking these textures to. And we're baking it to the plane and not the mesh because the textures are just squares, just like this. And so they'll just bake perfectly to it and it'll be exactly the same. If we bake it to the mesh, it might have some weird shading issues and just baking it to a plane I found works every single time. So next, we're going to want to click on the axe just to show these materials. And then with the wood selected first, I'm going to hold this and drag it onto here. And that'll just give it the wood texture. You could also click on the plane and then select from just clicking there on which one it is. And then next, we're going to need a place to hold all the textures. And I'm just going to do it inside of this folder. So I'll right click new, add a folder, and I'll just call this finished textures and we'll use that later. And you wanna make sure that a shader tab is open. So you wanna come up here until it makes a crosshair and then scroll over and then, and then click on this and click S. And that'll take you to the shader panel. And if it's not already open, click N to open the side panel. And then you wanna go down to the principal baker. Next, I wanna click on the plane just to make sure that that's selected. And I'm going to walk you through on what exactly it's going to do. So right now it's on auto detect. Just to show you what it's doing, I'll just click detect right now. And you can see that color, roughness, and normal is checked. And you can see that corresponds with what's plugged in. So we got base, color, so we got color, roughness, and normal. I always just keep it on auto detect. We have new material, so I'll open that up. And what this does is once it bakes, it'll create a new material with the new textures added already to it. And then this adds the new material to the object. I'm just gonna leave that off because it's just going to apply it to the plane and I'm going to want to apply it to the X. So I'll just leave that unchecked. And then right here, you can set the material name. So I'll set that to wood material. Next, we'll go down to prefix slash suffix settings. So there's a couple things we can do here. The prefix is what comes before. So you can set that manually. You can just type in wood, or you can have it be the object name. It'll save it as plain, 
right now, but I don't want that. So I'll set that to the first material name. And what that's gonna do is use this over here. So the first word will be wood. And then for the suffix, what comes after, I'm gonna click create and you can see all the ones right here. So it'll come out as wood, color, or roughness, or normal. And you can customize these however you'd like. You can also, if you want it to be capitalized or the first letter to be capitalized, you can just change that down here. You can make a lowercase, uppercase, or it'll just capitalize the first letter of every word. I'm just gonna leave it at custom because that's just gonna leave it as the lowercase. Next up here, we want to change this to single batch. And you could do combined, but I didn't really find much of a difference between these. And then just make sure that the plane is selected with the correct material and with the correct folder and the correct name. And then the prefix is set to the correct thing. So then we can go ahead and click bake. And this can take quite a while to do depending on your computer. For me, it takes about a minute or two just to bake everything out. And you can see it happening if you go to the texture. You can see the textures will slowly be dropping into the folder. All right, so now you can see that that finished. We have all the textures that we need. And so we can go ahead and apply that. So I'll click on the X and go to the wood and then click the drop down. And there's a new material added called wood mat. So we'll click that and you can see that it's exactly the same. I'll switch it back and there's no difference. And you can see that the wood material that we created, it just added all of the things for us right in there. So that's super convenient. And then we'll go ahead and do the rusty metal next. So with the rusty metal selected, I'll just take this and drag it on the plane. I'll click the plane and then there's just one thing that I need to change. And I'll go down here to the material name and I'll change it to slightly rusty metal matte. And everything else should work because it just uses the first name as the first one. And it's just going to auto detect. And I'll just keep the same folder destination. Although you could have different folders for each of the materials if you want to do that. Everything looks good for me though, so I'll just hit bake again. Alright, so it finished the rusty metal. And the textures look pretty good. So we'll go ahead and add it. So with the axe selected and the slightly rusty metal material, I'll just click the drop down. And then select slightly rusty metal matte. And that looks pretty good. There's no issues with it. And it has all the textures just like it should. All right, now if you wanna learn how to bake all of the materials just to one material instead of separate materials, I'll go ahead and show you that. All right, so I went ahead and changed the materials back to the crazy nodes and I'll show you how to bake it to one single texture. All right, so for now, I'll just click N to close out of that. And with the X selected, we'll come up here and click U for the UV editor. You can also just click UV editor right here. Next, I'm gonna click tab to go into edit mode. And then I'll start with the wood and you just wanna come over here and click select and that'll select everything. Make sure that something else wasn't selected because if you select all, then it'll take that with it. So make sure that nothing's selected and then click select and then make sure that that's the only thing that's selected. Otherwise it could mess up with the UVs. So next, what we wanna do is these are all overlapping and they're also outside of the square. They need to be inside the square and not overlapping. A couple things that you could do is you can go to UV and then pack islands and that'll separate them and place them inside of the box. And you can see that it messed up the direction. So I'm just gonna go back and with all of these selected by clicking A, I'm gonna click R and then 90. And then just make sure that those are in the box in the tab and I can see that it's fixed. You can also come over here and click U while in the 3D space and then do Smart UV Project, Scale to Bounds, and then click OK. And you can see it did it again, so I'll do R90. And then you can see that that fixed it. Next, we wanna make sure that there's room for the axid. And I'll go ahead and just scale this down and drag this over here just to make room for the axid. And scaling it down can mess up your UVs. So you can click on here, click S. I have a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. If you don't have that, you can go to Edit, Preferences, and I think the Node Wrangler just comes by default, so you can just click that to check the Node Wrangler box, and then you'll want to do Control t and then that'll give you texture mapping nodes. So then with that, you can adjust the scale of the wood. And then going back to here and clicking U to go back, I'm going to tab back into edit mode, and then select the axe head, and go to the material and click Select. Alternatively, you could hover your mouse over the part you want to select and click L, and then that just selects it by what setting is down here. You can select it by the material, seam, sharp, other which ways. Makes it a lot easier to select things with. So with that selected, this is going to be in the way of the handle. If I click A, you can see that 
they're all overlapping. So it's just the X head selected. This is also overlapping. So I'm going to click U, Smart UV Project, and then I'll select this and rotate it by R. I'm gonna move these over here. And then with the wood selected, just make sure that none of these are selected, otherwise it'll make it harder. But then click A to select everything. And now you can see that these are over here. And you can click L while hovering over them to select them individually. And so I'll just scale these down and then I'll click L to select these ones as well. And just make sure that none of them are touching otherwise it could cause more issues. So now you can see that we have them all separated and none of them are touching. And then you just wanna look at and make sure that everything looks good. I think I'm gonna scale the metal a little bit more. There we go, that looks better. Then once we do this, we should be ready to go. So I'm gonna click N, and then I'm gonna keep the file destination and the resolution. And then for the material, I want that to be called Axe Material. And for the prefix settings, I'm going to untick for it to be the material name and I want it to be the object name. You can also manually type it in, but for now it's going to be called Axe. So it'll be Axe Color. All right, and this all looks good. And I changed all the things I wanted to change. And then make sure that the Axe is selected and then click Bake. All right, so mine finished baking. You can see that it has the wood texture and then also the Axe texture. So then we'll close out of that. And I'm just going to remove all the materials and then change it to the Axe material. And you can see that that worked out pretty good. There's a couple of spots where there's some weird shading, like the bottom and also the top right here. It combined into the different textures, but you can see that it's no longer a mess of nodes. I did find a workaround around this. I'm sure there's a way to do it inside the settings. I'm just not exactly sure how to do that. But if you go to your texture and then open up in Photoshop or GIMP, you can see where all the places are messed up. It should just be blue but there's a lot of places that aren't. So here, for example, you can use the healing brush or the clone, and then you can just go over it and switch it up like that. And here there was some weird stuff, but now it's gone. And when you re-import the texture, you just wanna go down to the normal, click the folder, and then select the new normal map, and it'll probably switch it to a RGB which will make it have weird shading. You just want to turn that back to a non-color and that'll fix it. It's kind of an inconvenient workaround to the weird shading issue. I'm sure there's a way to fix it inside of here. I'm just not sure which settings to change. If you do find out, let me know. My preferred method is to do the one where you bake to the separate materials because it works every time and doesn't have any of the weird shading but you can choose which one you want to use. So let me know down in the comments if you found this helpful, and make sure to check out some of my other videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.